Good day and welcome to your Newsmax Daily for Thursday, March 7th, 2024, Friday Eve, as some people like to call it, and it's hashtag National Serial Day. One of the many things that you're paying more for and in many cases getting less of. Shrinkflation. Not inflation is one of the things the White House says President Biden will speak about in tonight's State of the Union address. Along with the new Medicare drug pricing negotiations, as well as raising taxes on corporations and rich Americans, pay your fair share, pay your fair share. Let's see how many times he says that. And if he mentions MAGA and how many times the extreme MAGA Republicans Although it is essentially a campaign speech, will he turn it into a real campaign speech? Vegas odds have the over-under at 69 and a half minutes. I'd probably take the under on that. Do you think President Biden is going to stand there and speak for 69 and a half minutes? Only if the White House told Democrats to clap a lot and help us use up some time. Otherwise, I can't imagine it going 69 and a half minutes. An hour is about the average State of the Union. Vegas also has three to one odds on him misnaming the leader of a foreign country or the name of the country. I'm not making this up. This is directly from Vegas. Wake Up America spoke about the State of the Union and the Republican rebuttal with former presidential candidate Governor Mike Huckabee. Um, Governor, great to have you on this morning. Um, I'm wondering what you make of the person who's going to be giving the Republican response tonight, Alabama Senator Katie Britt, uh, young, telegenic, great story, lovely family, very popular in the Trump camp. And there's a lot of buzz about her as being on the VP shortlist, along with people like J.D. Vance, Ben Carson, Nikki Haley. And believe it or not, um, Senator Rick Santorum on our air yesterday morning mentioned Governor Mike Huckabee as well. Well, I, I wouldn't say it, it's a short list. If I'm on it, it's a real long list. And I'm at the <laughs> he didn't say where you were on so it. So let's just be <laughs> real clear. Right. <laughs> if, uh, if Donald Trump can't find someone better than me, we're in real trouble in this country more than I even thought. It'd be funny if he's the nominee uh, now. Katie Britt's, a, <laughs> right. uh, Katie Britt's a great choice to do this. She's uh, articulate. She's smart. Uh, She will have a great camera presence. I'm thrilled that they picked her for this. And she's going to show an incredible contrast between Joe Biden, uh, a doddering elderly gentleman who can't remember things, uh, to a very, very sharp and thoughtful young lady who is making her mark in the United States Senate and in the country. But it's not just that contrast. The contrast is Joe Biden versus Joe Biden. If people would watch Joe Biden from five, six, ten years ago, they would see a very different human being than the one that's going to be in that uh, uh, lectern tonight. And I I just think that it's a real challenge for Joe to stand up there. Uh, He can have a teleprompter that's the size of a billboard in Times Square, but I still don't think he's going to be able to get through this speech without mumbling, bumbling, and stumbling because he barely can uh, do just an impromptu introduction of his cabinet without having to be prompted as to who works for him. So it's going to be an interesting thing. There are 200 watch parties across the country that the Democrats are hosting. Boy, those ought to be really uh, dynamic events. Um, So, you know, what is he going to tell us? Is he going to tell us he's fixed the border? Nope. Is he going to tell us the world's a safe place? Can't do that. Will he tell us the economy's doing great? Nope, not with $25 hamburger meals. So I'm not sure what he says other than, I'm sorry. That would be his best State of the Union mess. I am so sorry. I've screwed this up. I'm going to try better. Give me one more chance. If he says anything other than that, I don't think the American people buy it. I always like to say former presidential candidate and yuckster Governor Mike Huckabee on Wake Up America. Weekday mornings beginning at 6.30 Eastern. As he said, the president won't be talking much about the biggest problem in the entire country, the disaster at the U.S.-Mexico border, which has led to literal states of disaster and chaos in many cities across the country, especially sanctuary cities like New York, where there is just not enough space, not enough resources, money, or cops to handle it. The governor of New York, Kathy Hochul, a Democrat, announced plans to bring in the National Guard to the New York City subway system to help police search passengers' bags for weapons. 
There is news on New York's former governor, Andrew Cuomo, today as well. But first, Bob Brooks on American Agenda. Hochul's announcement is part of a series of actions she outlined to combat the crime in the subways. Joining us now to discuss is retired NYPD detective Tom Smith. Tom, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Bob. Okay, wow, this is getting serious. Deploying National Guard, New York State Police, uh, MTA police here. Why is it even like this in the first place, though? I think that's the question people are asking. It should have never got to this point. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's way too late. But the one thing that's comforting is they're actually acknowledging there's a problem. And the first way you take care of the problem is actually acknowledging there's a problem. Uh, And if that's the case, then fine. But there's a lot of flaws in in what I read with this five-point plan with what the role of the state police are going to be. Uh, it's great that you're going to be down there, but if you're going to be standing at a table just checking bags, that's not going to take care of the problem. Uh, And why is that? Because bad guys have more means and access to social media today than any police department or any politician. So what got said today, across the board on every social media platform, every criminal got told, don't bring a bag down into the subway. And plus, Guns, knives are not usually held in a bag by the bad guys on their person. So I want to hear more about what's going to be done on that issue and those problems and on that level. So if you're saying they have the weapon in their person, on their person here, unless you were doing stop and frisk, no real way, though, to prevent this from happening, correct? That's correct. You know, you have to let if you're going to combat crime in the subway, you have to let the police be the police. And that means doing that job. And if you see someone suspicious that may have a weapon, having the ability to go up them and check it out and not be in fear of anything that may take place afterwards. But to just just randomly stand around at a table waiting for bad guys to come up to you is not going to solve the problem that's going on down there. Give criminals an inch. They'll take a mile here. Tom Smith, we appreciate you coming on. We want everyone to know here it's not just New York City where this is happening, Tom. Actually, today in Philadelphia, hearing seven people were shot today at a SEPTA bus station, if you can believe it. And also happening, uh, again, the press conference about this. And we're going to keep talking about it. Crime, it's a growing issue. And in Chicago just as well, they're talking about the DNC They're getting ready for protests happening in August out there because of the unrest that is going to come with the left because they are a little bit unhappy about the way Biden is handling things. Bob Brooks, co-host of American Agenda on Newsmax with retired New York PD detective Tom Smith. Seven people shot, as he mentioned, at a bus stop in Philly yesterday, the second or third bus stop shooting within a few weeks there. And if you've never been to New York, the subway isn't really a choice. It is nearly impossible to get around the city unless you're walking just a few blocks. If you're going uptown, downtown, east side, west side, it's impossible to get around the city with Without using the subway and now people are fearing for their lives again well that's not true Tony people can take cabs yeah you can take a cab and two hours if you have that amount of time to get where you're going I mentioned Andrew Cuomo the Democrats darling of the pandemic right you know the guy who allowed people with COVID into New York nursing homes during the pandemic leading to the death of thousands of elderly people while the former governor has been subpoenaed by the house for questioning on that very decision I have no idea what spurred that decision at this point, but that is happening. By the way, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis was the first in the country to close down nursing homes, which they don't really call nursing homes anymore, assisted living facilities, uh, homes for the elderly, but he was the first person in the country that shut that down. I have so much to get to today. Obviously, the results of Super Tuesday and Nikki Haley dropping out of the race dominated the news shows yesterday. Eric Bowling spoke with the former presidential candidate and Florida governor. Then I'm going to get back to the border. And there was some incredible testimony on Capitol Hill that you have to hear as well. But first, we go to the balance with Eric Bowling. Before we get into some of the other things, I would just love to hear your first reaction to Super Tuesday. You know, Trump basically swept the field with the exception of Vermont and then Nikki Haley bowing out this morning. Your thoughts? Well, it was, I think, to be expected. I mean, uh, you know, she had uh, waged a campaign on the idea that you can somehow win the Republican nomination for president 
by getting the votes of mostly just non-Republicans. And that just doesn't work. And we saw that play out in Iowa. Uh, and I said at the time that, uh, that she didn't have a pathway. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm glad we're all uh, through that process. And, you know, now we're in a situation where Republicans are, are staring down the barrel of, uh, of a President Biden, uh, who's clearly not up to the job. And, you know, as a candidate in 2020, you know, I made that same argument. But if you compare him to 2020 to now, I mean, the guy has clearly uh, slowed down dramatically. Uh, his policies have not worked. Uh, so now is the time for that to be the focus. Very quickly, uh, Nikki Haley made the debate stages with you over at Fox and others. I think there's a couple other people had debates um, on the premise that the RNC required everyone to say that they would eventually, if you're going to make that debate stage, you would eventually support the eventual nominee. Um, she rose her hand, said she would, and now has kind of backtracked so far, didn't support him, said she might not support him. What is your recommend? I mean, it's probably not your job to give her political recommendations, but what's your advice to Haley? Uh, you know, especially, listen, you know, the, the, the two of you right now, for me, are the odds on favorites for the GOP in 2028. And I'd say you have the inside track. Well, first, just on the debates, you know, I was saying that Newsmax should have had a debate, so I was game for that. RNC didn't do that. But, but yeah, I signed the pledge, and you signed the pledge saying that you're going to not take your ball and go home. And so I honored the pledge, and uh, she's going to have to make a decision about whether she wants to or not. But the idea that somehow circumstances have changed, I think we all knew what we were doing uh, when we did that. Um, and you got to make a judgment about whether that's meaningful to you. And so for me, I tell people, you know, if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. All right. So we'll, we'll, we'll move on. I mean, there's a lot of speculation on who was supporting Nikki Haley through through this. And, you know, what took them so long, so long they spent one hundred fourteen million dollars. Ronnie D on the balance with Eric Bowling. Governor DeSantis just signed a bill to release the Jeffrey Epstein grand jury information. Governor, the other issue that is interesting Tell us what's going on with this Epstein files, with the victims, you're, you're working with them. To, are, are you looking to be able to finally, that we finally get eyeballs on, on the Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein uh, list of, of people who are his friends and people who may have done some pretty bad things? Sure. So this all happened long before I was governor. We all know the feds helped engineer a sweetheart deal in Palm Beach County for Epstein. He basically got a slap on the wrist. That's 2006, 2008 time period. When I became governor a few years ago, I launched a criminal investigation into how did this happen? The problem that we kept running into, though, is almost all the material was protected by Florida's grand jury secrecy laws, which those laws do make sense in normal circumstances. People have tried to sue to get it. The courts have slapped them down. So the Florida legislature passed a law to basically provide an exception to the grand jury secrecy laws in Florida so that these Epstein grand jury transcripts uh, will be eligible for disclosure. So that law, I signed the law uh, the other day. I did have some of the Epstein victims with me. It goes into effect July 1. So this summer, Eric, people are going to be able to petition to get those files released to the public. Public. That will happen. And our hope is, is that justice can finally be served. Because as of right now, you have, of course, Epstein, who's dead. You have Ghislaine Maxwell, who's in federal prison. And that's it. Nobody else has ever been held accountable for this. Are you kidding me? Are you trying to say nobody else was involved? I don't think there's anybody that believes that. Florida governor and former presidential candidate Ron DeSantis on the balance with Eric Bowling. That is weeknights at 8 o'clock Eastern on Newsmax. Yesterday in Florida, there was a huge human trafficking bust. And you have to hear what the sheriff had to say. Polk County, Florida is essentially right next to Disney World and the theme parks. It has been in the news many a times before. Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd is a high-profile, no-nonsense sheriff that has been in the national spotlight many times before. He's even been a guest on Newsmax before. 228 people were arrested in a human trafficking sting they called Operation March Sadness. You get it? like March Madness. A high school coach, a teacher, some members of the military were among those arrested for lining up sexual encounters with girls who are being trafficked. The sheriff at this point is hold at this point in the news conference is holding up a sign 
with the seals of all kinds of federal agencies on it. And on the bottom, it says federal policy drives illegal immigrant crime and victimization. Now, here's what they told us. All right. I'm sure the federal government will verify that this is not true, but you decide who you want to believe, whether you want to believe these victims of human trafficking or the whitewash the federal authorities give you. They said that when they came into the country illegally, DHS gave them a form, an ID, paperwork, that allows them to fly for free. You know, Southwest would let your bags fly free. Well, the federal government will let your illegal immigrants fly free. And they operate out of New York. And they were working up there, and the New York authorities said, hey, if you don't have identification, you can't work in our sex trade up here. You know, we don't allow sex trade here at all, but New York will allow you to do some stuff if you've got the proper authority. So they say they make a lot of money. They're addicted to it. These ladies are going to give you more details. They tell us that they fly to major metro centers for free on the federal government where they set up their appointments for sex all around the country. Did you hear what I said? Listen, folks, if they don't pay $3,000 apiece on Friday, they're in trouble. The human trafficker sets up the deal. Hey, this deal is just outside of Tampa. They say they show this ID, this card, this paper, they fly for free down here. Then they fly back. But we heard a similar theme from all 21 of these folks. We can't work legally. We're addicted to this cash. It's a lot of cash and it's quick, so we have to give 3000 a week. We get to keep everything above that. We have a crisis at the border. And because of the crisis at the border, we have people that are victimizing illegal folks, forcing them into the sex trade. That is Polk County, Florida, Sheriff Grady Judd. And this isn't Miami or Tampa, one of the big cities, maybe even Jacksonville. This is right next to Disney World. Sex abuse victims also took center stage on Capitol Hill yesterday. Buried beneath all the hubbub of Super Tuesday and Nikki Haley's departure from the race was incredibly emotional testimony at the House Judiciary Committee hearing on child sex abuse victims by advocate and former professional athlete Tim Tebow, founder of the Tim Tebow Foundation. In the effort of time here, I'm going to start about a minute and a half in, but I did retweet this entire video on my account at radio underscore Marino. I would highly encourage you to watch it and listen to the whole thing. The most vulnerable people. That's why we're here today. A year and a half ago, this awesome lady to my left, Camille Cooper, joined our team. And I asked Camille, I said, Camille, what breaks your heart the most? And she wrote down the number 20,000. And I said, what does that mean? And she said, it, it's a problem. I said, what problem is that? It's the 20,000 boys and girls that have been abused and raped. And their images and videos have been captured, but nobody has been able to identify them. They're unknown. Until someone knows them, how could somebody rescue them? And I knew that day that my heart was broken and my eyes were open and we had to do something. So I said, Camille, what do you think is the best approach? And she said, bring the best teams and players together. So we convened a meeting in Lyon, France with amazing frontline heroes. Homeland Security, Interpol, Europol, NICMIC, ICMIC, Onimi, Google, so many people and many more came to the table with really two goals. The first one, how many boys and girls are unknown, are unidentified? And it wasn't 20,000. It was over 50,000. And the second goal is how do we protect them? And that's where Operation Renewed Hope was born, led by HSI just a few miles away from here and so many partners from around the world. And in 15 days, they were able to identify 316 boys and girls 
316 boys and girls. It was an incredible operation, but that's a tiny den in what we're called to get to. It was amazing work, but it was so small in comparison. And so why we're here today is to be able to ask you to say yes to a bill that we're going to present. And this bill really has one goal, to build a rescue team. Because there's so many frontline warriors and heroes, but there's just not enough. And we need to support them, and we need more of them to get to these 50,000 boys and girls. So this bill is strictly to create a, a rescue team that has the funding, the support, the training, the technology, so that they can get to these 50,000. You know, I've had the privilege of playing for a lot of sports teams in my life, and almost all of them, we've had incredible resources to give us a better chance at winning a game, something that ultimately, as much as we care about it, doesn't matter. Why would we not give as much, if not more, resources to the frontline heroes that are going after the most vulnerable boys and girls on the planet? You see, when Operation Renewed Hope identified that 316, and out of all those that were rescued, more than half of them were right here in the U.S. And when you extrapolate those numbers, that means that there's thousands of boys and girls that are starving for hope in our backyard. And we have the chance to bring hope to those that are starving for it. That is Tim Tebow testifying in the U.S. House yesterday before the House Judiciary Subcommittee on Crime and Government Surveillance. If you're listening right now with a child, you may want to hit the pause button and come back a little later because this is where things really get graphic. But honestly, my words will probably fall flat today. So instead of hearing from me, I would rather you hear from one of my heroes, a young girl who went through extreme abuse for seven years, and almost every night she got raped for seven years. And in the middle of her abuse, this is what she writes. Rescue me. Help me. Monsters are chasing. Can't you see? Monsters are whispering. Can't you hear? Monsters are shouting, you're nothing. Can't you feel my pain? Monsters are pushing. End it all, just jump. Can't you hear all the whys I'm asking? Monsters are laughing. You're all alone in this. Can someone please rescue me? This girl and thousands of boys and girls, just like her, they're calling out, to you and to me, and how many times in my life have I missed the call, have I missed the mark? Unfortunately, too many. But would today be a day that we wouldn't miss the mark, that we would hear her cries, that we would hear her call, and we would answer the call? Because every single one of those boys and girls is worth us answering the call and doing everything we can so that they can experience the faith, hope, and love that they deserve. Not the bondage and torture that they're in right now. I believe if we build that rescue team, we will have a chance of getting to every one of those boys and girls. I got a message last night from a girl who has been rescued, and she said, thank you so much for speaking up for us. And it was humbling to get that. But if all we do today is speak, if all I do is speak, I also miss the mark. We have to do more than just talk about it. We have to act on it and be about it. Thank you for having me and God bless. So there you go. And I don't know how many people were in that room, but you can hear a pin drop, as they say. Every person there was captivated by the horrific realities of what he was saying. 50,000 boys and girls, unknown victims of sex abuse and torture, And wrapping it up here, Wall Street started out in the green today, but Fed head Jerome Powell is still talking. 
So let's hope he doesn't put the kibosh on things like he usually does. Just say something good, Jerome. Be sure to keep up with all the news all day on Newsmax, Newsmax Plus, and at Newsmax.com. If you don't yet have Newsmax Plus, go to NewsmaxPlus.com as soon as you're done listening to me and get signed up. I'm Tony Marino. Thank you, as always, for stopping by and checking out the Newsmax Daily. Share it with your friends and family. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday and keep on fighting the good fight. News breaks every minute, every day. You need the app, the Newsmax app. Find it free on your smartphone store. Then watch us anytime, anywhere. Kelly over at Newsmax. The Newsmax people have been really, really terrific. Newsmax has been terrific. President Trump is right. Millions are tired of Fox, and they're switching to Newsmax Plus. It's the fastest-growing streaming service in America. You don't need woke Disney and Hulu anymore. Just get Newsmax Plus. Watch the best shows like Greg Kelly, Rob Schmidt, Greta Van Susteren, and Eric Bowling, And get incredible analysis from Dick Morris, Alan Dershowitz, Carrie Lake, Mike Huckabee, and more. It's free to start. So go to NewsmaxPlus.com now to sign up. And watch Newsmax anytime, anywhere.